Hi, my name is Travis Law. I'm the Senior Director of SEO here at Web Metro, and today we're going to be talking about uh, Not Provided and Hummingbird. Uh, first, we'll talk about Not Provided. So approximately three weeks ago, I think around September 23rd or so, uh, Google released the fact that they will be securing all keyword data uh, starting then. So uh, regardless of whichever analytic programs you use, they'll no longer be passing keyword level data there uh, from the organic side. The paid side is a different story. We all have, I think, our ideas why. But for the organic side, uh, no longer can track keyword data. So what this means is that uh, basically three things. Number one is this is a big change to reporting and measurement. So whereas before, if you are using an SEO agency or if you have in-house SEOs, your reporting must change and the measurement must change. However, the optimizations that you're currently doing in terms of of uh, content creation and all of the other SEO techniques that you might be using, those still are live and, and this doesn't affect those at all. So you can continue to optimize, but you must report and measure differently or look at different KPIs and we'll talk about those um, in a little bit. Secondly, you can't sift out keywords or separate them in any way. So uh, a lot of people will want to separate between brand and non-brand or uh, long tail versus high generating keywords or, or head keywords, and you no longer can do that. So that's another uh, uh, big impact of, of not provided. And, and I think the last one, which often gets overlooked, is you no longer have visibility into the amount of keywords that are driving traffic to your site. That's gonna be huge, especially as updates continue to roll out. I think 2.1 came out last week or something. Um, but you can't see how many keywords are driving that traffic to your site. So whereas before, you might have had 100,000 keywords that drive uh, 100,000 visits to your website. And then an update hits and you see 200,000 keywords and 200,000 visits. That uh, visibility is no longer available to us. So with that, uh, with those three challenges, there's definitely some things that we can do about it. And we'll go into those examples right now. Okay, so now that we've talked about uh, some major challenges with not provided. Let's talk about how we can adapt to this new world of not provided. Um, so first, I, I just want to say that you can still track visits and leads and assisted conversions and all those types of things. Uh, you just have to do it at a page level now. So going into GA here, um, under acquisition and then organic, you can see uh, which pages are driving what amount of traffic. You can look at bounce rate still. You can look at pages per visit um, and average visit duration, just like you could on a keyword level, but now you have to look at the page level or the URL now. Another thing that you still can do is look at assisted conversions. So under conversions and assisted conversions and organic assisted conversions, you can see which pages are uh, contributing to your funnel the most. The more uh, assisted conversions that you have on a single page, typically the better that it's doing. So you wanna increase the amount of assisted conversions that you receive uh, per page. So it's just like what you were doing before with keywords, but now you have to look uh, from a page level. Another thing you can do is um, set up uh, advanced filters and group things together. So let's say you had a, a website about shoes and you wanted to look at all the pages containing Nike shoes. If you have keyword rich URLs, it is much, much more easier to do these types of things. If you don't have keyword rich URLs, I would suggest starting to make the change immediately. Um, so if you wanted to see the visibility, your organic vi visibility for Nike shoes, just do uh, advanced filter, include landing page containing Nike shoes, and then it'll populate all of the pages that contain Nike shoes. Another way you could look at this is you could group uh, the pages together. If you wanted to look at all the running shoes, you just input all these URLs into the advanced filter, create a segment that you can go back to month over month, and you can see um, how your running shoes category uh, essentially did here, okay? Another thing we'll talk about is rank tracking, and this is one of the big topics uh, in the minds of SEOs, and we've, as an industry, tried to move away from rank tracking as much as possible because there was too much focus on rank tracking, but I'm here to tell you that it is definitely back. 
Uh, but I want to talk about a few different things. And with rank tracking, uh, one of the main reasons why the industry wanted to get away from it was because of personalization and because of geolocation. You add those two things together to any search query and it may change your SERPs and it might change your, your different results. And the thing that you want to think about with rank tracking is that if you are an enterprise company, uh, looking at the personalization is probably not that important. Uh, whereas looking at the geo might be a little more important. So uh, are the results different for accounting software for the enterprise in New York? Are they different uh, than if you do the same search query in Los Angeles? If they are and you are doing rank tracking, it's very important that you use multiple data centers in order to do an average position um, or you're just aware of the uh, geolocation. Another component that we'll look at number four is webmaster tools and with webmaster tools we found it to be extremely inaccurate. Uh, you definitely don't want to use this to report on visits. Uh, on the keyword level I think directionally it's pretty good but anything under 50 clicks and over a thousand clicks we found to be extremely off uh, and very inaccurate uh, all the way up to 70 percent okay, using this versus analytics data. Um, it's, it's been very off. Now, if somebody in your organization is pressuring you to say, how many visits am I getting on this single keyword? Uh, what we found to be most accurate is using uh, AdWords. Now, it might sound a little funny to use AdWords for organic data, but probably a few months ago, uh, Google released a new report under dimensions in AdWords. Once again, this report is in AdWords only. And uh, under that, there is a report called paid and organic. This report will show you how many clicks you're getting organically and how many clicks you're getting from the paid when different ads are showing. So here's an example of an organic uh, ad shown only. Okay, 347 clicks with 30,000 queries. Okay. Uh, this one right here will show when paid search and organic show together. Now, no, there's only three impressions for this one that we've snipped out here, uh, but there are 95 organic clicks and 371 uh, impressions or, or, or queries. So if somebody is pressuring you, like I said, to really find out how many visits am I getting on that individual keyword, we found AdWords to be most accurate and the discrepancy seems to be about 10 to 15% off. There's some other variables that may play into this, but if you're really looking for that keyword level data, uh, the way to find it is within AdWords. And those are some tactics that you can use um, in order to understand your organic visibility better. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about Hummingbird. Uh, Hummingbird is a bit of an algorithm update, but uh, not so much. So they didn't scrap the old algorithm and replace it with this thing called Hummingbird. They kind of took out some of the components that they didn't like as much and they replaced it. So it's not a brand new algorithm, it's just uh, a bit of an update or an upgrade from their perspective. One of the big things about this update uh, is that it affects a lot of websites out there. So typically when updates happen, they tell us it affected 2.3% of search queries or it affected 3% of search queries, something like that. With this, they're telling us that this affects 90% of the websites out there. That's huge. So if you're watching this video, you've probably been affected one way or another uh, by Hummingbird. The biggest thing with Hummingbird, the major piece of Hummingbird is that um, they are now saying that they can parse out the entire search query. So whereas before they would only look for certain keywords within uh, the query, now they are looking at the entire query and then deciding which web page on what website uh, they deem most relevant or most authoritative and then serving that as uh, the highest results. So if you're doing SEO right now or if you have an agency, uh, you definitely have a keyword list and we'll talk about what you can do with that keyword list right now. So uh, you take the keyword list and you basically want to separate the keywords into either research based keywords or transactional based keywords. With Google's update with Hummingbird, they are now looking for intent. 
So what intent does the user have when they type in certain keywords? Is that intent research-based or is it transactional-based? And that's what you want to be thinking about. The other thing to do is kind of easy is if you don't have an FAQ right now, you should create one. People are asking, starting to ask questions now uh, when they search. They're using voice search, those types of things. Uh, Google Glass. Uh, so if you don't have an FAQ, create one. Or if you already have one, expand upon it and build other things. So do keyword research to figure out what are the questions that are people ask, what questions are people asking, um, and then how do you expand upon that? So uh, now we're getting to a little bit of an exercise, and I want you guys to pay attention uh, to the keywords on my left here. So I want you guys to pause the video in a second and just go ahead and sift them out and say whether or not each of these keywords is transactional or research. Gut feeling, looking at it, is it transactional or research? <clears throat> now we'll go ahead and go through them. So. Uh, Enterprise accounting software uh, is actually both. And we kind of measure it in two different ways. One is by gut feeling. If somebody were to be typing in the search term, uh, are they looking to buy something or fill out a form? Or are they just looking around trying to gather more information? Now, the ultimate way to figure out whether or not it's research or transactional is to do the actual search and figure out what results come back. If you get sites like Wikipedia, uh, top 10 types of lists, review types of lists. They're definitely, it's definitely a research type of query. If you get companies, uh, it's more on the transactional side. So company, you know, regular websites, maybe home pages of websites, it'll tend to be more transactional. So we'll go ahead and go through this list. Uh, best enterprise accounting software is transactional. Enterprise business accounting software is also transactional. Who has the best accounting software is a research type of term. And then enterprise accounting software price, you might think that this is a research-based type of keyword. Google tells us that it is a transactional search term. Okay, So now that we've bucketed them into either research or transactional, now you have to map them out to the different URLs. So let's say uh, URL 1 is your homepage. Let's say URL 2 is a transactional page. And let's say URL 3 is a research-based page. Okay, so uh, you might say enterprise accounting software, I'm going to go ahead and map that to URL 1. That's the home page. Typically, the home page ranks well for head match terms. So I'm going to go ahead and map that one out and optimize this URL uh, for this keyword. Then we take the transactional keywords, map them to the transactional page, and we take the research page or the research keyword and then map that uh, to the research page. Now, the other important component, after you've kind of mapped this out, and this is, I think, standard SEO practice to map out keywords to pages. Uh, this might be a new step, but mapping them out isn't necessarily a new step. You want to look at the actual content on the URLs. So if you have a transactional page, what is the intent of the user? It's looking to buy something, fill out a form. So what type of information, what type of content are they looking for? Well, they're probably looking for things like price. They're looking for... Uh, the size, they're looking for dimensions, they're looking for the features, they're looking for videos, they're looking for pictures of it. Those types of things would fit underneath transactional content. When you look at research content, maybe they're looking for questions to be answered. Uh, reviews, those types of things might be more on the research base. So back to the content and this kind of, you know, SEO always tends to come full circle a little bit. The transactional types of URLs and pages need to have different types of content uh, than the research-based keywords. Uh, and that is kind of our update and how you should be adapting to Hummingbird. And we've been talking about this for a while. Uh, I think SEOs for a long time, we've talked about how content is king. And now we're shifting into quality content is king. And I think now with Hummingbird coming out, really understanding the intent of a user and providing them the proper content uh, will be king now and kind of going into the near future. That's our Hummingbird update uh, from Webmetro and have a good one.